So this is our first note making session. And I thought that it would be good to demonstrate some of my process because I've been asked by quite a few people now to get some perspective on how I write notes. Before we jump into it, let me just start this timer here. This is uh, one of my favorite analog tools to help me focus and know how much time has passed. It's called the time timer. Highly recommend it. So we're just going to place that here. And this way I can actually see how much time has passed and how much time is left, which is uh, a little bit more effective than just looking at a digital clock. So anyway, uh, this is the reading material that we'll be looking at. I just began this book. I'm only still in the first chapter. It's called the ADHD 2.0 by Dr. Ned Hollowell and John Ratty. I have my source card here. Uh, I've only written three source notes so far. And as you can see, this is what we'll be doing here. I've got an idea underlined. The digital version of this would be, I'm going to make a link out of this key term. And that would potentially become a note. It may not, but I just kind of want to link it to be able to resurface that. So um, we definitely have some material to start with here. And so let's get some context here. The chapter is titled A Spectrum of Traits, right? So you always want to understand the context. And what this chapter is about is the ADHD traits, right? So he goes through a list of various ADHD traits. I think it's here, right? So wandering mind, trouble organizing and planning, high, uh, high degree of creativity and imagination. So they're not all negative, right? He's, co he's covering some of the uh, negative and positive. Uh, trouble with time management and a tendency to procrastinate. And the context of this is that ADHD has, uh, the ADHD mind has paradoxical tendencies. So I've made a note of that. That idea stood out to me and I've heard that said before. And so I just was thinking about that a little bit because I don't know that he really expounded upon it yet. Um, but you can kind of see what he's getting at, right? Because one of the paradoxical tendencies is the tendency to procrastinate, but also, um, I think it's maybe further on here, uh, a restlessness and an impulsiveness, right? So that's kind of the opposite of procrastinating. It's it's almost just acting without even thinking. It's like just jumping into something. And so that's a paradoxical uh, tendency, right? So that's, that's the first idea that I underlined. I am telling myself I may want to write a main note about that because that's a very compelling idea. And one thing that I'm asked often is, how do you know what you're going to want to make a main note about? And my answer is simply that it will make itself known to you. It will be an idea that you are so irresistibly drawn to that you almost have to engage with it. Now, does this come about while you're reading? Do you start writing a main note in the middle of the reading? Or do you just kind of continue uh, reading and get more context and then write the main note? That, that's kind of up to you and how you want to establish your workflow if you feel like uh, if you start writing notes in the middle of your reading and that's going to break your flow in, in some way. Um, I, I mean, you would have to kind of figure that out as you develop this habit. But I don't have a problem doing that. I've done that many times before. So there was an idea here that I uh, just wanted to write a quick source note about. So I'll get my pen. So I think maybe we'll just get one more and then I'll, I'll have enough to start writing a, at least a couple main notes here and we can see if it develops further.
let me address the question in the chat here. Uh, the book is organized already into chapters and connected units of knowledge. Do you save that and then also use Zettelkasten? Uh, yes. So that's a great question. The way that Lumen wrote his source notes, what I'm doing here is, and this is in the, uh, how to, how to write smart notes book. Um, there's this famous quote that he would write his source notes with an, with one eye towards the Zettelkasten. So he would have one eye on the note box, not literally, it's a, figuratively. So that's, kind of like referring to you want to be thinking about the knowledge that you've already uh, that you've already connected in your in your note box right so I might be going through this and thinking like yeah I have something I can connect that to and you're just kind of prepping your mind for establishing connections when you go to write your main notes so that you have that at top of mind you know that's good to keep in mind that the author has organized this knowledge in a particular way and it's your job to, to uh, reduce that to, to simplicity. That's what we're doing here. So this is in the book is this is complex knowledge that the authors have organized and categorized in the form of chapters and sections. And then all we're doing here, notice how I don't even have the chapter title or anything like that. It's just the page number and the idea. I'm just capturing ideas as they come to me. And so I'm almost removing the context in the source note because I'm simplifying it. And this is the beginning of this whole process. So as I'm simplifying this, I'm already thinking about what complexity I'm going to add with my existing knowledge base when I go to write my main note. So one thing that we can do here is I'm going to get out my index. And so I might be thinking of some key terms already. And so obviously one of them is going to be ADHD, right? So I'm going to pull out my A index. Well, this is one of my A indexes. And it happens to be on this first index. I kind of just know that. I remember it. So I see right here ADHD. And that's in 2180. So I'll go to 2180. 2180. Okay, here. So here's st this starts the ADHD section of my note box here. So let me just, uh, you know, let's get a better position here. So here's 2180 ADHD. So now I know this is where, you know what, let me get this stuff out so I can actually file through this a little easier. Okay, so I've got a note on the hunter-farmer hypothesis. It's a continuation. Generalist versus specialist. This one I might want to pull out because I have something here about the first uh, source note I took here was ADHD as an entrepreneurial trait because of the mind's nonstop idea generation. And that kind of relates to some, a couple, at least a couple of the notes that I have here. So I might, you know, I have this uh, hypothesis. I'm explaining this hunter farmer hypothesis about how ADHD traits are beneficial to hunters while non ADHD traits are beneficial to farmers and hunter gatherer societies. So, and then I continue that. I go on further in this with this idea. And then there's another, there's a third continuation or second continuation. And so I might want to pull these out actually. Let's take these out. What I like to do is flip that so that I can get back to it easily. And you know what? Let's just take out all these cards. Now you can see how slow this is and you're probably, if you're used to Obsidian, you're thinking this seems really tedious. Like why would I do all this when I can just do a quick search in Obsidian or, you know, do the index, pull up my index in there. And 
That is because, uh, yeah, you, so you could do that. I'm not going to say you can't do that or you shouldn't do that. Sometimes I actually will do it. I'll just go in Obsidian and pull up my ADHD index um, and and work from there. But I guess for the purpose of this video, I'm doing an analog version of this so you can see what the whole process is like. So, yeah, I already know that these aren't going to lead to anything that might be useful to me for this idea. So that's about all I've got there. So we'll put that to the side. Now, there may be other connections that are not in that section. And so this is where it's like, even in Obsidian, you're not going to you're going to have to just recall this or you, you know, do some searching in obsidian and clicking around to find other areas of knowledge that this idea might connect to. And that doesn't have to be done all initially, right? I'm initially, I'm just looking where I'm, where I'm going to file this. And do I have a related idea that I can connect this to right away? And so that's what I just did. Uh, Javon says, I do see some use for doing it manually. It sparks knowledge and possible connections between the notes while you are searching and navigating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I'm looking at the titles. Some of my notes don't, uh, my cards don't have titles. Um, and so I'm forced to pull them out and, and re-engage with that idea. So actually that's probably a good case for maybe not writing titles on your note cards. You have to do that in Obsidian. And so one of the downsides to doing that in Obsidian is that you may glance at the title of the note and say to yourself, yeah, that's not really related because you're not actually reading the whole note. Um, so I would say if you're using Obsidian, uh, make a habit of actually clicking into the note because that's that's reflecting the analog process where you have to actually kind of refamiliarize yourself with that idea by reading the note. Okay, so uh, this is going to probably be the boring part because now I'm going to just start sketching out this idea, uh, drafting it in my notebook. So I'm going to think about how I want to start this. Let's see here. I'm going to definitely start with the Hmm. I really like I I I'm so inspired by this material here. I I think I may even just start with this note because now you know, like do you see what just happened that I was surprised by these notes that I forgot about that that are more related to this initial th this first idea that I captured. The first idea, which is right here, ADHD as an entrepreneurial trait. Okay, so just as I was uh, browsing through my existing knowledge, I was reminded that I have an idea that I can link first. So I'm going to underline this. So I already have, you know, I, I can already see myself generating a good amount of main notes just from these one, two, three, four pages. That's not going to always happen. So don't think of this as like, oh, I need to write a bunch of main notes from a, a very small amount of reading material. That's not going to always happen. Not all books are equal. Uh, this, this one just happens to relate a lot to what I study, what I research. And, you know, again, I have more context so I have notes about industrial society being built by and for farmers. And in this context, the farmer, uh, hunter farmer th hypothesis is about how this rigidness of society, of industrial society, the, the way that we're uh, in school and, and, and uh, the, the, the school system itself, the way it's structured is meant to kind of uh, groom us into being 
these complacent workers, right? Where the bell rings and that's like, oh, it's you can get up from your seat and go take a break now, or you have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. And this is all how we're conditioned to uh, become compliant workers, right? Um, as at a young age. And, and so that's kind of what this idea is getting at. And that's what I said here in this note. This is why it's considered normal to be perfectly content, punching the clock every day, working the same hours, the same schedule with the same people. It's why the schools are designed to create farmers, not hunters. And, and so I don't think this is, you know, now I'm thinking this out. I'm not sure this is going to be a continuation of that, but I'm definitely going to draw from that. And so what I'll say as I start to draft this out is, um, okay, so it's going to be a little bit boring because I'm going to kind of go silent here. So just bear with me. So let's just go ahead and write this first note because what will probably happen, well, I don't even want to assume anything, but what I'm thinking is it's a possibility that I may, as I'm writing this main note, start to continue this idea as I'm writing it. So because now I'm about to engage with it again, right? So I did the initial source note extraction. That was the first engagement with that idea. I reduced it to simplicity and now I'm adding complexity to it. And I drafted it out already. So this is like my third time now engaging with this same thought. And then there's a fourth time when I go to enter it into Obsidian. So there's a whole nother layer to this. And so, okay, now the next thing I do here is uh, we're going to reference this source material. And so this is, um, I usually have it on my source card, but I didn't write it yet. But it's just the author's last names. And then, so I just do this, R for reference dot, this is going to be, uh, Hollowell dot Ratty and the year, the year again, I usually would have this written already, but, um, the year is 2020, uh, 2021. I can always uh, fix that if I'm wrong about something. So two, okay. So now, now it's reference. And then what's the page number? This was from page. This was from page 14. So I'll say P 14. Now it's referenced. Okay. So now I can have a paper trail for where that idea came from. It leads back to the source material. Now I have to file this. So we have to think about, where do we want to file this? And you don't want to overthink this too much. This is something a lot of people get really stuck on. Um, but let's look at the cards I pulled out. So this is what initially came to mind. This is about ADHD. This is the closest related idea that I have, at least that I can think of. Um, and if there is something else that's elsewhere in my note box, I would do a C also, um, which I might actually. So let's, you know, this is part of the filing process. Let's pull out another index. I'm thinking maybe digital technology. Okay. So I have here, I have here digital technology 560 slash 06. And then it's in a completely other section 1610 slash five. 
Okay. So 565006, 1610 slash 5. So let's um, pull those out and just see what that is. So see how long this takes? Like, it's really, um, you know, but I'm thinking the whole time, right? Because I'm trying to see where I can, you know, do I have anything related to this? So let's uh, go to 50, let's start at 5650. Okay, so 5650 slash 3a. 5650, I just pulled it out right away. See that? Um, so this is about, what is this, data? Now that's not going to really be related. So what's the other one? 1610 slash 5. 16, so I'm in the philosophy section, 1610 slash 5. Ah, okay. Oh, this is interesting. So you've got a whole other... Okay, so I've got... What are these about? The anxiety of being unplugged. When we're unplugged from digital technology, we tend to feel a sense of anxiety, fear of missing out, and the excitement and stimulation of the endless source of dopamine it provides. The boredom epidemic of the digital age. The collective anxiety man experiences in the digital age has led to an epidemic of boredom. Okay, so again, very, uh, you know, the, they seem negative, but it's like these are ideas that I have that they don't all have to be uh, super encouraging. They're, they're just ideas that I captured that com were compelling to me. Um, so... What do we want to do with that? I'm going to... I'm going to reference this, right? I'm going to say, where's the note that I just wrote here? So I'm going to say, see also, we're going to say, see 1610 slash 5A1. Okay, so now I just linked it. I just linked this idea here, and then you could, you know, you could even kind of backlink it if you want to call it that uh, on this card. And I might say, because I might stumble upon this idea looking for it elsewhere related to something totally not related to this uh, or seemingly unrelated. And now I want to lead myself to this note. So I'm going to say here, C, and we don't know the file number yet. So let's get a file number. And uh, this one's, this is a separate section. And so I'm looking at the numbers here. And so it's definitely going in 2180. I know that that's the top level. And this is not about the hunter-farmer hypothesis, which these three notes are. And so that means it's going to get a new, uh, it's going to get a new ID of, well, they all have new IDs, but this is going to get an ID of two. So I'm going to say, oops, I just, okay, here. Um, we're going to say 21, 80, slash this is going to be two so I'll leave it at that for now and so it's going to get filed like this and now oh there's there's one more thing I have to add the link here um, I have to add the link here so that is 20, 2180 slash two All right. So I hope this gave you some insight to how, uh, how this process works. Again, it is slow, but 
quality thinking is slow. So because I took the time to do that, and even though I only produced one main note from it, I'm quite sure this is going to produce more, but um, I, I was able to expand my the value of the notes that are in my existing knowledge base by interconnecting them and uh, add, contributing more to this, uh, to this knowledge. And so I've added my own complexity to it. Do you see how that works? We just took the knowledge in here and simplified it. And then I just built new complexity. And now I've connected it to this idea of the digital age that I have all this additional context to about the boredom epidemic and the uh, hunter farmer hypothesis about living in industrial society and that having un environmental factors and the contribution to these negative traits. And I didn't even get into the positive stuff. So maybe in another video, I'll do um, the notes that I intended to write, but that's how this whole process works. Like you might think that you're about to write about a particular idea that stood out to you and your thinking just takes you down another path. So I'm glad that you were able to see how that develops. That's the fun in doing all this, the spontaneity and the surprise. The, um, that is what uh, Lumen referred to his Settlecaston as a, a surprise generator. So I hope that you were able to see how I just surprised myself with my own knowledge. Now let's just do the last part here, which is to actually file these and index them. Um, I don't know that there's much to index. Let's see here. I have ADHD. So because I already have ADHD indexed, I'm not going to index this particular note because when I go to my index, it's going to take me to this top level category and I'm just going to file through and find this note that way. So you don't need to index every note. I will index this if it has a new key term that I, that I have not indexed yet. Uh, let me just scan through this and see if I have any, um, let's see. Okay. Smartphones. So we want to underline that and then I'll check my index for that and attention and procrastination. So I, I forgot to underline these, but so what I just did there was I linked them and now I'm going to get my index and say, we'll go to P okay. So here, wait, let me just check that I don't have uh, notes on procrastination, do I? No, I don't believe so. These are all people notes. Okay, so I'll say here, procrastination. Procrastination. And then we're going to link to this note here. So it's 2180 slash two. And that's that. So we've got that indexed. We've got attention. I know that I have an attention. I know I have something on attention. Yes, I do. So right here, we've got attention. And so what I'll do is I'll I'll add to this because this is, it's still in the same top level, but as these expand, these, uh, the, the five, the level five, I guess, if you want to call it, um, it might be harder to find. So I'll just add that here and say 2180 slash two, just like that, that can go back. and then smartphones. I also want to uh, reference this under digital technology as well. 
so I don't have smartphones. I thought I, I know that I have other notes on smartphones, so I'd have to go in and find those and make sure they're indexed. And we'll link that here, 2180 slash two. So if I was gonna spend more time on this, I would go through and find the notes I have on smartphones that I forgot to index or that I'm now being reminded of that I should index. But you get the idea. So, um, oh yeah, and then digital age. So I know that I have notes on that. I write a, quite a bit on the digital age. Where's my D index? I don't know where that went. Must have, uh... well, I'll find it um, later. We, You get the idea. <laughs> oh, it's here. So digital technology. And I don't have this um, top level indexed here, so I'm going to add to it. 2180. And as, as I develop more on these, so um, this is a good example of this actually. One, so this is uh, two. So because, because I have three... I'm going to create a new index for digital technology. So I'm going to underline this. That's how I know now I have an index for digital technology. And so when I see that, what I'll do is I'll take a new card. And we're going to make a digital technology index. And, and then what I would do is find what these notes are about and then label them here and reference the file numbers. So you'll reference the ID with some more context about what that note is about. And it'll get indexed here under the digital technology key. To, this is what's called a key term index. So these indexes are just letters and they're just like they're just unrelated key terms listed out. And then this would be a key term index that has all of these other uh, key terms and ideas that are uh, being indexed under digital technology under whatever the key term is. So that's how that works. But um, the last step here is you just simply file them in the box. So, um, you know, I didn't give this one a title. I, I kind of don't mind that some of them have titles and some don't. And if I feel inspired, I'll give it a better title. But uh, when I go to put this in Obsidian, I usually title it to make it searchable there. But that's the process. So then, yeah, I'll just stick these in here and I'll actually file them uh, later on. But I wanted to end the video here because this has been longer than I uh, was planning but yeah i hope this was helpful if it was uh please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these i would really interested in maybe doing live streams on youtube uh maybe once a week or once a month or something like that um because i do this anyway so it could be fun to maybe have a, a bit of a hangout session while we write notes together so let me know and please like and subscribe and all of that. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care, my friends.